right yes here we go nice to see you again here on youtube on my live stream and let's go on with the next 30 question i think we will do two or three more because uh, we have done already some more in the spanish version so i think we will do today 33 so let's go <laughs> all right here we go with the first question how must a load projecting more than one meter beyond the rear reflectors of the vehicle be marked in darkness by an orange warning plate by switching the fog tail lamp on by a red light and red rear reflector well uh, in case you don't know orange warning plate no um switching the fog light is not correct neither it is just by a red light and red rear reflector all right nice let's go ahead what can be the effect of an overload of only 20 percent there may be too much strain on the load bearing parts of the vehicle the brakes may be overstrained steering may become worse hmm what do you think it is too much stain yes the brakes may be overstained and steering become maybe worse all the three answers are correct nice all right let's go ahead what is the significance of orange warning plates on a vehicle it is transporting easily perishable food perishable food it is transporting dangerous goods it is transporting cattle what do you think hi <laughs> it's nice to see you again so one two and three do you think i'm not sure if you're right now in that question or in the one before because exactly in that one it is just dangerous goods correct nice what must you be aware of if you want to transport a load the load may not interfere with me the load may not slide even when i break uh, the load may never project over the front of the vehicle hi sachin see you too nice um so in that case the load may not interfere with me yes that's important may not slide even when i break what do you think definitely and may never project over the front of the vehicle hmm do you think free as well actually it is allowed to put a load high or more in front of the car if it's not more ahead than 50 centimeters so we shouldn't click that one just the first two answers are correct nice there we have it from what height it is permitted for loads to project up to 50 centimeters in front of your vehicle uh, the question is if this is your car and this is the load so how much space do you have to have from the button till the top of your load i'm not sure if i could show it good here in that camera but what do you think one two or three so just one of these should be correct two meter fifties two meters or three meters mm. The typical height of a car is two meters fifty. So just the first question is correct. Exactly. So the load has to be high enough that in the if it looks over the car in front, that there is enough space and it has to be at least two meter fifty from the load until the floor. All right, let's go ahead. What do you have to make sure of regarding the load on your vehicle? I have to use suitable equipment to prevent the load from shifting. 
my vehicle may exceed the gross vehicle weight rating by a maximum of 5%. My vehicle may not exceed the gross axle weight rating. So what do you have to make sure uh, when loading the vehicle? The first, the second, the third answer? Let's have a look. I have to use suitable equipment to prevent the load for shifting. Yes, that's clear. Yeah, we have to keep it tied to the car. So um, we need some extra equipment for that in case. And can you, if the if there is a maximum and you can rate it over this maximum, it, it is it's not allowed. Obviously, that's that's why it's a maximum. Yeah, and you can't put not even five percent more on it. So second is not correct. The correct answer is the third one as well. Nice, exactly. One and three. My vehicle may not exceed the gross axle weight rating. Good. Who is responsible for the roadworthiness of a licensed vehicle? The driver, the owner, the motor liability insurance company. So who is responsible for the roadworthiness of a licensed vehicle so who is in charge that everything is correct in other words the driver the owner or the liability insurance hmm well two of these answers are correct and i think that case it's not that difficult it's definitely the driver he has to check before he's driving if the car is in good condition and the owner as well both it's not only two it's the driver and the owner all right let's go ahead what must you do when you are traveling and you notice that your vehicle is no longer road worthy so in other words what do you have to do if your car has a breakdown and it's not safe anymore to drive ahead continue only when the damage has been repaired Proceed to the next authorized dealer. Take the vehicle out of the traffic as quickly as possible. Hmm, what do you think? Well, it is continue only when the damage has been repaired is correct. So the first one. Proceed to the next authorized dealer. If it's not safe to drive anymore, you should stop immediately and you're not allowed to go whatever and just try to go straight ahead with any taking any risk. So no, that's not allowed. You should not proceed to the next authorized dealer. Um, you should take the vehicle out of traffic as quickly as possible. So it's one and the third, actually. Yeah? The second is not correct in that case. So there has to come another car to pick you up. I don't know the correct word. I think towing or something like that is the correct word, I think, to um, get you to the next authorized dealer, but you shouldn't drive by your own if your car is really, really damaged. All right, which defects of a vehicle can result in danger for road traffic? Defective rear lamps, insufficient braking effect, worn tires or used tires, however you'd like to name it. That is quite easy because in this case, in this case, these are all three answers correct. So let's have a look. Nice. One, two, and three. All right, let's continue. You want to make a telephone call while driving a vehicle. What must you be aware of? Mm, okay, we're driving and someone calls us. Would that be allowed? Telephoning using a hands-free unit does not distract me. I may be distracted by the call. I may be distracted through operating the telephone. Hmm. What do you think? It is first, second, third. It is the second and the third. Telephoning using a hands-free unit does not distract me. No, 
I don't know, if your wife is calling you and she's screaming, you haven't cleaned up the room, whatever, she might be distracted even if you have a hands-free unit. So the first one we should not click. Uh, what must you be? Um, I may be distracted by the call, definitely. I may be distracted through operating the telephone as well. Both. So, <laughs> you know that situation probably. All right, let's go ahead. You want to make a telephone call while driving. What must you be aware of? I may use the telephone without a hands-free unit if the vehicle is parked in a suitable place and the engine is fully switched off. I may use the telephone without a hands without a hands-free if the vehicle is moving at walking space a uh, walking pace. Or I need to have a hands-free unit. So you want to make a call and what you must be aware of. One, two or three. Well, one and three. So let's have a look. I may use the telephone without a hands-free unit. If the vehicle is parked at a suitable place and the engine is fully switched off. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, if the engine is out. You can call and I mean, use the telephone without hands free. Moving at walking speed is not correct. So it's the one and the last one. You're right. Nice. All right. You want to use a motor vehicle on public roads. What must you observe? The motor vehicle must be covered by liability insurance. I must be the vehicle owner. The motor vehicle must be roadworthy. So that is not that difficult, I would say. It is the motor vehicle must be covered by liability insurance. Yes, you're not allowed to drive without liability insurance in Germany, but you don't have to be the owner. It can be your friend. If his insurance allows it that someone else take the car, it mustn't be your own. So, but which is important is that the vehicle is roadworthy, obviously. So it's the one and the last one. What applies immediately before and on zebra crossings? You may not park, overtake, stop. Okay, we're now coming with a lot of questions with zebra crossings. And what do you have to take care? What we are not allowed to. Before we are not allowed to park and you are not allowed to overtake neither. And you shouldn't stop. Yeah, the one and the last question is that you're not taking someone's vision on the zebra crossing if you stop or park there. And if you overtake, you remember if you have to overtake, you have to do the blind spot check, check all mirrors. And meanwhile, you're not looking anymore at the zebra crossing. And in case someone walks in, you might um, yeah, have a problem. And that's why you shouldn't overtake in front of it. So it is all free correct. All right, let's start with the movie. We are driving 40 kilometers per hour behind a blue truck. Uh -huh. And there is a zebra crossing and from the right someone is running. Uh, you probably have seen him, yes? Let's go to the question. What is the right course of action? I continue driving slowly because there is no indication that any pedestrian wants to cross the pedestrian crossing. I stop because a child behind the van is going to walk onto the road. I stop because a man wants to cross the pedestrian crossing. Have you seen it? I know we've seen it just one time. But are you sure? I continue driving slowly because there is no indication that any pedestrian wants to cross. It's definitely wrong. So we shouldn't click it. I stop because of a child behind the van is going to walk. There was no child on the left hand side. So that is not correct neither. I stop because of the man who wants to cross. Yeah, he was starting to run from the right into our way. 
using this zebra crossing, so the only correct answer is the third one. All right, what is correct in this situation? Let's have a look. We are driving with 40 kilometers per hour, and there is a zebra crossing in front of us, and on the right is a bicycle driver. And um, how fast is a bicycle? I would say something around 25 kilometers, maybe if it's really fast, 30, but he's probably not driving 40 kilometers per hour. So we are faster than him. That is important. So if we don't slow down, we will probably drive by and overtake him. So what is correct in this situation? Here I may only overtake the cyclist at a moderate speed. Here I may not overtake the cyclist. Here I may overtake the cyclist because there is no oncoming traffic visible. What is the correct conduct? The correct conduct. Well, actually, we did it before. Yeah? In the last question, we were saying that one thing is not allowed in front of a zebra crossing, a part of stopping and parking. And you have to remember that one to get this one right. Because if you remember, you know that the only correct answer is here I may not overtake the cyclist. So the second answer Mm, only overtake the cyclist at a moderate speed is not allowed. Remember, if you're in front of the zebra crossing and you will probably catch him exactly when he's at the zebra crossing, you're not allowed to overtake no one. So the only the second one is correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's go ahead. What must you anticipate with traffic islands like this? All right, we are driving 25 kilometers and there we have this traffic island. On the left, there is a person and on the right, probably a bicycle driving towards that island. And behind of us is a car too. All right, let's have a look. What must you anticipate with traffic islands like this? Cyclists crossing the road without paying attention to the traffic. Pedestrians always respect the right of way for vehicles. Pedestrians thinking that they have the right of way over the road traffic. Therefore, you have to be sure what is the rule actually in that case? And if there is no zebra crossing, we as a driver have priority. However, we can't be sure that the other ones respect it. So it is, we have to be careful even if we have priority because the cyclist, exactly one, might cross without paying attention to us. And pedestrians thinking that they have the right of way but they aren't but you have to be prepared that they might cross so it's the first and the last answer exactly and you can't trust that the pedestrians know the rules all right what is the correct cause of action in this situation we are driving 30 kilometers per hour on the right is a street we have priority because you can see it here on the right there is a stop sign, so probably we have priority here. However, in front of us is a zebra crossing with some elderly people. I don't know if they wait or they just stop and they're about to go. It's not that clear. All right. What is the correct course of action in this situation? I watch the pedestrians closely. I reduce my speed and prepare to stop if necessary. I continue driving at the same speed. All right, I will give you a little bit of time. Mm, I watch the pedestrians closely is correct. Exactly. And I continue driving at the same speed is not correct. I reduce my speed to prepare to stop if necessary. So it's the first and the second one exactly one and two nice all right the traffic light is green 
you want to turn right. How do you respond to pedestrians wishing to cross the road into which you want to turn? So we are driving and we want to turn right and there's someone crossing the road. So how to deal with that? Allow the pedestrians to cross the road. Make the turn quickly before the pedestrians. Warn the pedestrians by sounding the horn. There is just one answer correct. And you probably know it because if we turn to the right, we have to give priority to all obstacles, vehicles, pedestrians who walk straight ahead. We have to give them priority. So the only answer responding to that rule is allow the pedestrians to cross the road. Perfect. Yes, it's one. How do you respond to pedestrians wishing to cross the road into which you want to turn? Isn't that the same like before? Well, allow the pedestrians to cross the road. Make the turn quickly before the pedestrian. Only wait if the pedestrians are using a marked crossing. It's again, obviously, allow the pedestrians to cross because the explanation is the same. You cross and um, they are way and you're not driving straight ahead. So they have priority and they don't need any mark crossings and you shouldn't drive faster than them. So it's again the first one. Nice. Exactly. What is the right cause of action? Okay. That's the same again, but this time in a picture, yeah? We are driving 25 kilometers. We're about to indicate to turn to the right. And in front of us, we have two people crossing from each side. However, they are going straight ahead and we are about to cross them. So you know who has priority, hopefully. What is the right cause of action? Wait, because the two pedestrians have priority. Continue driving because the two pedestrians have to give way to me. Proceed in front of the oncoming pedestrian because he is required to wait. And I think we can do this short again. It's the same like before. We have to wait and both of them can walk first. So it's the first again. Yes, exactly. All right, in which instance do you have to approach a pedestrian's pedestrian crossing with particular care? If the view of the pedestrian crossing is restricted, if another vehicle is already waiting at the pedestrian crossing, if pedestrians want to cross the road. So where do we have to care? Where do you have to get closer with particular care? It's all free, I would say. Yeah? If the view of the pedestrian crossing is restricted, if someone is already waiting there, for example, we are driving and in front um, there is a vehicle um, stopping, then there might be someone walking we haven't seen before. And... Um, if they want someone to cross, we have to wait too. So all free. Exactly. A pedestrian want to cross the road via the pedestrian crossing. What should you do? I refrain from overtaking. I overtake the waiting vehicles, taking extra care. I get ready to stop. All right. What do you do? We have a pedestrian walking or about to cross okay I drink a little bit of water so the correct one is i refrain from overtaking correct and you shouldn't overtake a waiting vehicle because you should wait and that's why i should be ready to stop so it's the first and the last one nice what should you do in this situation Okay, we are about to turn right. Uh -huh. 
in front of us is a blue vehicle who is waiting for the cyclist and however there is a pedestrian crossing as well and a person from the right wants to cross it so let's see what should you do in this situation i pull up directly behind the blue vehicle i allow the pedestrian to cross the road i wait this side of the pedestrian crossing until the blue vehicle has made the turn what's the right conduct well i pull up directly behind the blue vehicle then we would wait on top of this pedestrian crossing and we should always leave it free so it's not the first but it's the second and the third we should allow the pedestrian to cross and then we leave a little bit space and wait in front of it until the blue van can pass all right it's the second and the third why is it particularly important to adopt a defensive driving style when approaching a pedestrian crossings when approach oh my god when approaching pedestrian crossings in order that pedestrians are not unduly alarmed in order to avoid rear end collisions in order that vehicles following behind can overtake more easily okay so i would say it's the first and the second question or answer so in order that pedestrians are not unduly alarmed and in order to avoid rear end collisions in order that vehicles following behind can overtake more easy no that's not the case they shouldn't overtake you in front of a pedestrian crossing it's just the first and the second nice all right, you are driving in the left-hand lane of a two-lane one-way street. About 30 meters in front of you, a truck comes to a stop in the right-hand lane before a pedestrian crossing. What should you do? I continue driving swiftly. I approach at a moderate speed. I give a warning signal and drive past the truck. So, mm, following case, you have two lanes and in this two lanes you are driving on the right hand side and in front of you is a truck stopping and then there comes a pedestrian crossing. So you probably can't see from that position the pedestrian crossing. So what should we do in that case? I continue drive swiftly. Mm, I approach at a moderate speed. I give a warning signal no definitely not i'm not sure about the first one i i have to see it in german ah, okay no you shouldn't drive fast ahead no so it's just the second one nice all right let's go ahead a cyclist wishes without dismounting to cross the road at a pedestrian crossing what should you do i allow the cyclist to cross the road I sound my horn and continue driving without giving way to the cyclist. I only brake just short of the pedestrian crossing. Well, you have to know that it's a pedestrian crossing and not a bicycle crossing. So actually a bicycle, if you or if you are driving on a bicycle, you have to leave the bicycle and carry it uh, or just go by side and then you can mount it again and drive ahead but you're not allowed to cross a pedestrian crossing with your bike however no one cares and um, we are not allowed to kill someone just because he's not following the rules so i allow the cyclist to cross the road is definitely the correct answer even if you would have the right to go I sound my horn, no, and you don't break in the last moment to give him a lesson learned is not the right conduct as well. So it's just the first one. Nice. In front of you is a pedestrian crossing beyond which the traffic in your lane is backed up. What should you do? 
come to a stop before the pedestrian crossing to allow people to cross. Wait on the pedestrian crossing if there is no one in sight. Wait on the pedestrian crossing to shorten the traffic jam. So in front of you is the pedestrian crossing. Behind of it, a lot of parking or waiting cars. So where do you stop and wait? What do you think? Come to a stop before the pedestrian crossing? Exactly. That's the only correct answer because you shouldn't wait on top of it. And um, no, for any reason, you shouldn't wait on top of it. You should wait in front. Please don't do this in your practical exam. You might fail immediately. This is a big mistake. So yes, just the first one. All right. What is the right cause of action? Once again, so we want, in this case, we want to turn left. We are driving 25 kilometers per hour. And there are two pedestrians waiting. They're going straight ahead and we're about to cross them. So let's read the question. What is the right cause of action? I wait because the two pedestrians have priority. I continue driving because the two pedestrians have to wait. I take the turn before the oncoming pedestrian because only this one is required to wait. Mm, I think that is quite easy. I wait because the two pedestrians have priority because we are crossing their way and it doesn't matter if it's on the right hand side or in the left hand side. We are not following our direction. We are turning and that's why we have to let the oncoming traffic pass and this includes pedestrians for both sides. So it's just the first one. All right, ready for a tunnel video. So we are driving with 50 kilometers per hour and there is a construction on the left and in front there looks it looks like there is an accident. People are running for the to the exit and we are already activating our emergency lights. Okay, let's go to the question. What is the right cause of action now? I stop, switch off the engine and leave the ignition key or transponder behind when leaving the vehicle, exit the tunnel via the emergency exit, wait in the vehicle for the scene of the accident to be cleared. What do you do? I hope this will never happen in your real life. That's quite scary. So let's have a look. I stop, switch off the engine and leave the ignition key or transponder behind when leaving the vehicle. That is sounds silly to leave the key. However, it's required because if you leave the um, car later and um, you take the key with you, the firefighters can't pass and they can't turn the car by side. So that's why if you leave the car inside of a tunnel, you always should leave the key inside of it. Exit the tunnel via the emergency exit is a very, very Good idea too if there is smoke and everything. Wait in the vehicle for the scene of the accident to be cleared. You shouldn't do that. So it's the first and the last. All right. Under what emergency number can you call the police and the emergency services in Germany? That's an important question. Do you know it? What are the necessary numbers to call if you want to call the police and emergency services like firefighters? It is 110 and there you will talk with the police and 112 is with emergency services like ambulance or fire workers. So it's both 001 police 002 for fire workers that's important to remember please all right okay nice let's go ahead you're involved in an accident what document must you present to the other person involved in the accident if requested the liability insurance contract my driving license 
the registration certificate part one or the operating permit. So what's the right color? What is the right answer right now? The thing what you have to show in case of an accident and this is your driver license and as well the registration certificate part one. However, it's quite often that you change your insurance cards, but this is not a must, yeah? And it's especially not the contract, yeah? It's just an, an information card and this you can do that both insurance can talk to each other, but it's not necessary. So it's the second and the third one. Correct, nice. All right, you are the first to arrive at the scene of the accident where there are injured people. You're secure the scene of the accident and have gained an overview of the situation. What else do you have to do? I have to document the accident. I have to deliver first aid to the injured. Or I have to notify the emergency services. Okay, you don't have to document the accident but you have to deliver first aid, obviously. That's why you have to take this first aid course while um, obtaining your driver license. And you have to notify the emergency services. So it's two and three. Um, yeah, I will go on until 193 this day. So just three answers left. You are involved in an accident in a car park. The vehicle damage is minor. Everyone involved agrees that the police do not need to be informed. What would be helpful now for the claims process? Describing the cause of the accident in the accident report. Photographic, photographing the scene of the accident from a number of angles. Exchanging the necessary details with those involved. I hope you don't have to do that, but you should describe the cause of accident in the accident report. This is normally you have from your insurance, you have a letter um, which you have to have in your car or it's recommendable to have it. And there you have an accident report and it's not even in German, it is in English too. So you should use it and it will be easier to report it. Exactly, Nap Hassan, all free. You have to make photos of the accidents and you exchange necessary details with the other people involved. However, keep in mind if this happens, well, first about all three are correct. What I wanted to say is if you make pictures of the accident, most people get very close to it to show the accident and the damage. But keep in mind later the insurance will see these pictures anyway from the maintenance uh, which will do uh, pictures of the damage too so it is more clever to go far ahead to um, make a picture of the whole scenery that there are the lines on the floor the signs everything is noticed that it's clear that you haven't done this accident and the counterpart has crossed the line for example and this is not visible if you're too close so better make pictures from far away all right let's go ahead your vehicle has damaged someone else parked vehicle. Despite waiting a reasonable period of time, the owner of the damaged car fails to appear. What is the right cause of action now? So we have crashed another car, maybe a parking car, and um, no one is there. What should we do? Well, I have to leave my name and address at the scene of the accident. I report the accident to the police. I give my name and address to a witness not involved in the accident. So first about you have to wait a considerable time. I don't know actually, I'm not a lawyer how much it is, but it's probably more than 10 minutes. So I don't want to say that. I don't want to say something wrong, but I would wait at least something like 20 minutes to an hour, probably. Um, however, how you can solve it, it is I have my name and address at the scene of the accident. Yes, you should do this. 
and report the accident to the police if there is no one and the witness no um doesn't matter in that case so just these two things are correct and you have to do them both so it's not enough just to leave a note you have to call the police and it's better to leave a note there too so it's one and two all right and the last question for today you are the first person to arrive at the scene of an accident with injured persons what should you do first as a rule make the scene of an accident safe drive to the next telephone box and call the rescue service check the seriousness seriousness of the injuries so what should you do first imagine you get to an accident a lot of injured people um, people screaming um, a lot of things going on and you're thinking do i have the warning lights the first aid course maybe should help what should i do should i call the police actually it's just asked for the first so there's just one answer correct and honestly it's the first one make the scene of the accident safe however even if there is people who need your help first make the scene of the accident safe don't drive to the next telephone box and don't check the seriousness of the injuries first make it safe because if it's not safe and you're helping these guys and another car doesn't see a crash into you you might be injured as well so that's why first make the scene of the accident safe always if you are two person then you can say okay you do this i would do that then you can split obviously but however if you're alone do first save the accident scenery all right nice then thank you for joining thanks snap hassan and obviously arsalan thank you too for joining and um yeah see you tomorrow at um 8 30 um if you like and yes thanks for joining all right goodbye